I was contacted by a client to do a full inspection on their Somer Grand Piano. Let me walk you guys through that. At five times the speed of Steve, I'm going to take all of the case parts off of this Somer. Being pretty careful not to scratch the finish. It is a uh, satin finish. We don't want to wreck that. A couple screws hold the fall board in here. So I'm going to go ahead and take those screws out as well as the cheek block screws because sometimes on these old American pianos they can be connected. I go ahead and set those off on a nice soft carpet. Nothing's going to get damaged down there. One of the first things I like to look at after I've gotten all the case parts off is the bridges. Here you can see I'm inspecting the treble bridge. Everything looks good, no cracks, no splits, nothing out of the ordinary. Take a look at our base bridge real quick. Everything looks about the same here. After that I crawl under the piano. I check out the soundboard looking for any cracks. They're pretty apparent when you've got a nice light on you. Always check the ribs for separation. That's these protrusions from the soundboard. Everything seems solid on this one. We're going to go ahead and mark and notate all of what we found. No cracks in the soundboard, no bridge cracks, no separating ribs. All right, on to tuning pin tightness. I choose a selection of strings and I loosen them. So I bring the tension down on the string, bring it out of tune, and then bring it back up to pitch and make sure it sets correctly. I like to make sure to test a few strings from each break on this piano. Here I'll only show two breaks, but I do check every section that you see in front of you. It might be a little hard to read, but I do write tunable here. Next thing we're going to look at, the hammers, but first that action has to come out. This was a very stubborn action to come out. The base section of the hammers was actually rubbing on the bottom of the pin block as I pulled it out, so I was very careful, went very slow to pull that action out. As you can see, these hammers are really flat, heavily grooved. Uh, you can see a little bit of a wave in the um, hammer line here, but it's not too big of a deal because we're not in the key bed, we're on the bench. Now here you'll notice that I mark uh, file, but I actually I changed my mind at the end. Uh, these hammers are too far gone for filing. They should be replaced. Next thing on the list is knuckles. Let's take a look. When inspecting knuckles, I like to give a few of them a squeeze in each section and see how hard they are, how pliable they are, if they're noticeably loose, anything like that. These are definitely hardened, worn, they've been graphited, they're a little bit flat on the end, so I'm going to end up marking replacement on these. Now that I've finished with that, I'm going to go ahead and move on to some other action parts. A common repair I see is center pins, and the way you can diagnose that is by dropping the hammers from a low height and seeing if they're slow to bounce or slow to fall to the bottom, and if there's any sticking, of course. So I go through each section, just kind of flick them upwards, looking for any slow center pins on this. Even though these center pins aren't new, I'm going to go ahead and mark them for a pass. None of them were outstanding. For lubrication, I mark always. I'll never go into an action without lubricating the parts that are necessary to. Next thing I'm going to take a look at are the key tops. I always like to check the tops for any dirt, scratches, blemishes, and chips. I always also look at the sides and make sure that there's no finger gunk that's built up over years. Very common on older pianos. These keys definitely need a nice polish. Let's take a look at the key bushings, a very critical component. I always walk through, look at every single key bushing on the top. I give each key a shake in a few different sections, making sure that they're tight, not too wiggly, and not knocking. If it's knocking, you can guess that the key bushing is missing. A little dust inside here, maybe a piece of plastic that can get cleaned out later. Other than that, the key bushings look pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and mark new on this one. Recently replaced it even looks like. Okay, brass is next. We always take a look at the pedals. I like to push them while I'm down here, make sure they're operating. And one thing to never forget is the casters. How do these things look? That's going to be a pass for me. No reason to polish these. They're nice and good looking. 
There was some dust found on some other felt, so we're going to go ahead and write that. Let's take a look at the interior now. The amount of dust on this interior is definitely a sign of its age. This may have been kept in a high traffic area or may have never been cleaned or cleaned sparingly. Very, very dusty. Very, very gross. We'll be sure to clean that out when we get to it. We've seen inside. Now let's take a look at the outside. When I'm walking around the exterior of these, I'm always looking for anything major. Missing buttons, scratches, chips, dents. Here we can see some handprints. That's not too big of a deal. That'll wipe off pretty quickly. It's also very common to see handprints on this side of the piano because that's the way the lid hinges up. Nothing too crazy here. We're going to go ahead and mark this one as a pass. Now we're going to go ahead and put the action in and check the regulation, voicing, and dampers. Let's get to it. First thing I like to do is play every single note chromatically. Let's move in for the damper test. Nice and crisp. Sustain's working. Check that sostenuto. Perfect. Let's check that shift pedal. We are in the clear on that. Back to our notepad to list down what we've written. Regulation felt fine, nothing stuck out. Now this voicing is very bright. That is definitely due to the condition of the hammers. So we're gonna notate that down. The dampers stayed nice and crisp the whole time. And even though I moved this off the screen, I do write about the pedal workings. Those work, let's check the tuning. Unfortunately, I used my phone to check the tuning. The tuning was at 439, but the unisons were pretty far out, so we're definitely going to want to go ahead and tune this one. A dusty soundboard rounds out the inspection here. We're going to go through the rest of the list to make sure we didn't miss anything. All right, once that's all done, we just have to look at our time estimates. I'm going to leave that out for the sake of this video. Thanks for joining, guys. See you next time.